because this uh, uh, video number 16 in terms of the NCLEX review prep, test taking strategy, commonly tested topics, 10 questions for your review. Let's get to it, adapt NCLEX. Keywords, easy questions, straightforward, but you got to follow the keywords. And let's provide care for a client with what? Metabolic acidosis. What initial primary compensation? You see the word is compensation. The next you expect for this acid-base imbalance. Straightforward. Whenever they ask you acid-base imbalance and they give you the current um, acid-base issue, the best way to know the compensation is to flip it. Metabolic acidosis. Flip it, right? What is metabolic? Respiratory. Opposite of that, what is acidosis? Alkalosis. Therefore, anybody with metabolic acidosis who have a respiratory alkalosis, they will be breathing very fast. There's no more going to be an acidosis to compensate. There's no more going to be acidosis to compensate. You have to compensate with alkalosis. Which way? It's a metabolic. You're not going to compensate with the Metabolic problem, why you have the underlying metabolic problem. So it has to be respiratory alkalosis. Straightforward question. It's our test taking strategy. Next one. Which action by the nurse is appropriate? Action. Pick one. A nurse prefers to administer ear drops to a two year old client. What is the problem with ear drops? You see these questions all the time, is our concept. If you're less than three years, or you greater than three years, two years old, it's less than two years. Everything is related to the pain. What are you going to do? We are going to go backward. But what? Down and backward. If it's older than greater than three years, then it's still backward, but it's going to be down. So that is the difference. So down and back. This how you're going to pull the ear, and then you can instill the eardrops. That's the answer choice for that. So number one is your right answer. Next question, number two. A charge nurse is observing a nurse provides care for a client with chicken pus. Which action by the nurse should require the charge nurse will require the charge nurse to intervene. That means what? Your charge nurse is seeing a client, seeing a nurse, take care of a patient with chicken pus, varicella. Which of these actions require follow-up? Keyword. Take varicella or chicken pus and say, this is what? Airborne and this is what? Contact. Therefore, every action I'm going to make to substitute airborne and then what contact? What is the problem? Place a surgical mask on the client during transport. Yeah, when they are inside their room, they don't need a mask. But when they are outside their room, they need a surgical mask. This does not need intervention. Place alcohol base rub um, in the uh, client's room for an hygiene. Yeah, you can use what alcohol, or you can just soap and water. But this is there is no strict requirement since. This does not require specifically you got to wash your hands. So alcohol base is also okay. Placing client in the monitored negative air pressure. So that is for the airborne. Test taking strategy, you got to put for. There's no need to wear a face shield unless the patient you're changing dressing and there's a risk of splash. So number four is the right answer. I'm just giving you the key concept to answer the question. Which action the next should expect? Okay, therefore, the next should expect certain action. Why? And then assesses a client in the emergency room with what? JVD buzzword, cyanosis, and upper resonance on precaution. If this is their chest, you tap their chest, you can hear like resonance, a bunch of hair. Most of the time, this happens because the hair is outside. And then if you have JVD, and you blew, that means your airway is being compromised by what? Tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax will give you the hyper resonance. 
Therefore, what do you need to do? Immediate decompression. Which one? Chest tube or needle decompression? Needle is better because you don't have time. This is tamponade. Is it true? No, this is tension pneumothorax. And therefore, you need to decompress this quickly. Then lay down, you can put a chest tube. You don't need to do pericardiosynthesis because this is no fluid or blood in the surrounding the heart. And intubating this patient is going to worsen the situation. Number five, and let's review the EKG for a client with diaphoresis and dizziness. Which medication the nurse should identify as the potential cause of the client carrying condition? Select or apply. This is what they've given you. Giving you this rhythm, you can see what? PQRS, PQRS, and then you can see there's P, they're followed by QRS, PQRS, and the rhythm is sinus based on the normal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is like severe bradycardia. So you have a patient who have sinus breathing. Which of this will cause sinus breathing? The, the joxin will slow heart, your heart rate down. The joxin will do that. And diatizam will do that, calcium channel blocker, and the beta blocker. Atopine will speed up the heart rate, and abutero is a beta agonist that will speed up the heart rate. So one, two, three is the right answer. So that's how you answer this question. It's all based on concept. Next question. Which teaching the nurse should include? The nurse provide teaching for a client with what? Left ankle fracture prescribed crutches. So his left ankle is fractured and he has crutches. What will you teach them? Keep the elbow fully extended when using the crutches. You want to keep it between 20 to 30. Bear weight on the arms and the hands. That's good. Keep the clutches 12 centimeters apart and in front. No, the clutches should be on the side as much as possible. Okay, on the side as much as possible. Assume the four point stand at all time, three point stand because the ankle fracture will be non weight bearing. So the right hand side is number two. Bear weight on your arms and your hands. So that is the right answer. Next question, number seven. And let's provide care for a 90-year-old client who is unresponsive and has no pulse and is not breathing. What is the next first action? So there's some questions that is applied specifically to others. He's a 90-year-old. There's a reason why I say he's 90-year-old. He has no pulse and he's not breathing. Look like he's in cardiac arrest. I know you want to do CPR. I know when you do cardiac uh, defibrillation, but you got to verify the advanced directives. It's 80, 90 year old. It may be do not resuscitate. And then you resuscitate the patient. So just verify quickly and make sure the nurse can find out from another nurse that A. Is he a DNR? He's a DNR. You just have to. Not do anything because if he doesn't want to, does not want to be resuscitated, intubated, all those things is implied. So all these answers are right, but two is much better. Next question is provide care for a client who is prescribed lithium for mood disorder. What prescribed medication the next should question? So there's contraindication of lithium usage uh, because it's going to affect your kidney and then uh, you was in lithium. So if you're taking lithium, you should not take AC inhibitor. This is related to sodium. You should not take uh, NSAID. This affects your kidney. You should not take hydrocortisone, diuretic. This will worsen your kidney. Those are the key three things you should worry about when you're taking lithium. So AC inhibitor, NSAID, hydrocortisone. Beta blocker and acetaminophen does not affect uh, anything related to the uh, um, the kidney, and then that will worsen the lithium. So one, two, three, 
are your right answer. Number nine. And then it's our attended staff education program about our eating disorder. When caring for a client with eating disorder, which finding the nurse should prioritize to distinguish eating disorders? So if you want to know whether it is anorexia or nervosa, what are you going to use? BMI, preoccupied with body weight, means of purging, and bingo. And being and, and being and purging. Look, all of them. They can use laxative, they can use exercise, they can induce vomiting, they can eat and vomit, they can be all, most of them preoccupied with body weight. But which one distinguishes between what? Anorexia from bulimia is their BMI. Anybody less than 18.5, it has to be anorexia. And if you're greater from 18.5 and you have eating this eating disorder, most likely mean to be uh, bully, uh, bulimia. So this is how you can distinguish between them. It's mostly um, bulimia or body mind, body BMI determine the difference between bulimia or anorexia because of their body, body mass index. So let that apply. And it's provide care for a client with hypercalcemia. Which of the following findings the next you expect? I'm always going to give you the key aspect to answer the question, but I'm not going to give you every little thing. You see, key aspect, apocalcemia. How would you memorize the symptoms of apocalcemia? If you know it, good luck. But if you don't know it, pay attention to this. For calcium and magnesium, they are the same. When the level goes up, okay, when the level goes up, is very high, what is going to happen? Your symptoms will be down. So if you have, what, hypercalcemia, I should expect symptoms that goes up, down. If you have hypocalcemia, I should expect symptoms that goes up. Therefore, based on that, this is hypercalcemia. Muscle cramps, it looks like it's ice, Excitable, so this is not from anesthesia, it's the same thing. QT prolongation that means your QT is prolonged because you don't have enough calcium, right? Twitching of the face, this shifts the sign, right? And depression, it looks like things are going down, constipation, things are going down. So, five. And C's are your right answer. The other ones are consistent with hypocalcemia. And this is the end of it. Thank you for watching. If you have a question, you can send, put in a comment. But good luck. All the best of luck. Ten good questions that you usually may, may somehow find it on your test. Take care of yourself. And have a good day.